What's up everybody, this is Danny. Today I'm gonna to be looking at the Nvidia Shield tablet. Now this is a brand new tablet from Nvidia that tries to be the ultimate tablet for gamers. This is an eight inch tablet, which is my favorite in the tablet space because it's a lot more portable and it's being powered by the brand new Tegra K1 mobile processor with 192 Kepler GPU cores and it has support for DirectX 12 and OpenGL 4.4. So we're talking about desktop class architecture on a tablet. This is available in two configurations. This is the Wi-Fi only model, which is $299. And there is an LTE model, which is $399 and you get 32 gigabytes of internal storage. The base model only comes with 16 gigabytes of internal storage, but there is an SD card slot for expansion. Now there is a shield wireless controller and the tablet stand, and those are coming. So I will have coverage on those in a separate video. So let's just go ahead and unbox this thing and see what comes in the actual package. So there is the Nvidia shield tablet right there. And we'll just go ahead and put that to the side. Typical stuff in the box here, you get the micro USB to USB cord. You also get the power brick, which has the same design language as the tablet. And we'll look at that a little bit later. You also get some documentation, which we will never look at. And it also comes with the wall interface that you would need for whatever country you may be in. So that's pretty nice and it's very easy to click on right there and you're ready to go. Not much in the box, so let's go ahead and take the plastic off of the tablet. And I'm doing an absolutely terrible job taking this plastic off, but let's get rid of that. And on the back is a black matte rubberized type finish, and the shield logo is in the landscape orientation. It reminds me a lot of the Nexus 7. Now what makes this tablet unique is that there is a stylus pen in the upper right corner and the pen actually feels really good in the hand. I feel like it's a pretty high quality pen and what's also unique about this pen is if you look at the tip it actually looks like a paintbrush and there are some apps that take advantage of this so we'll take a look at that later on in the video. On the back is a five megapixel camera, and on the front you will see dual front-facing stereo speakers, which make for a much better multimedia experience, and they are very well done, as you can see here, and they're chamfered edges all around the tablet, which makes for a premium looking design, and I quite like it a lot. And on the opposite side of that stereo speaker, you will find a five megapixel front facing camera. So that's pretty high quality for that. You will also find a micro USB port right there, a mini HDMI port for console like 1080p output at 60 frames per second, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and up top a weird power button placement, and volume rocker switches and also the micro SD card for expansion. And on the bottom, there are some openings there for the tablet cover. So there it is all fired up and there is the eight inch 1920 by 1200 resolution IPS display. It looks very good. And there is the shield portable, now it's called right next to it. The K1 is the successor to the Tegra 4, which is powering the Shield Portable. So I ran a bunch of benchmarks to see how much performance has increased. And you can see here, Geekbench 3 shows a good significant increase. And also Antutu shows a 43,000 Antutu score, which is pretty high compared to the 38,449 that we see there. GFX Bench shows a significant increase in GPU performance. Look at the T-Rex off screen, about three times the performance there of the Tegra 4. And look at the render quality as well. It's much higher on the K1. I know this is expected, but those numbers are pretty staggering. And let's take a look at 3D Mark here. Look at the score, 31. 430 on the Tegra K1 and 16,849 on the Tegra 4. So we're looking at almost double the GPU performance according to these benchmarks. Benchmarks are benchmarks, but real world performance wise, this tablet runs very fast. You can see there's no lag at all. The animations are very smooth. So the K1 looks like it is a very capable GPU and CPU combo. It does have A15 cores. So this is a very powerful tablet. What I appreciate is that this is a near stock build of Android with just a few minor tweaks just to make the gaming a better experience on the tablet. And it looks like it's running Android 4.4.2 KitKat and there should be some updates coming right around the corner. 
In the drop down shortcuts menu, you'll find an easy way for you to pair up your Nvidia Shield controller, and you will also find a shortcut for you to broadcast to Twitch with your gameplay, take an easy screenshot, etc. These are the little minor tweaks that I was telling you about to stock Android. You can also look at your processor mode and give it the best performance for gaming, or you can actually have it balanced to get some better battery life. Overall, this should be very familiar if you've used an Android tablet before. It looks very much like a stock Android device, and I like the way it performs so far. As we looked at before, there are dual 5 megapixel cameras on the front and back, and there is the camera software right there. Very, very simplistic, and you can take a look at the resolution here and change it. Your max resolution is 5 megapixel, and you can take a look at the 1080p video recording as well. So I'll give you a few samples in the full review, and let's take a look at the front-facing camera. There it is right there, and it should be pretty decent quality, and I will take a few of those as well in the full review and test the front-facing camera. Even though you can play any Android game on this tablet, there is an app that congregates all of the Shield optimized games all in one hub. So that's very nice. So you can go to apps or you can go to all games and you can see all of them and you can scroll through them because it was kind of hard to find them in the Google Play Store. And if you look, there are some controller based ones as well that are optimized for the controller and games like Half-Life 2 and Portal are exclusive to the Shield devices. While my slow Wi-Fi takes forever, you can see that when you go to buy the game though, it takes you straight to the Google Play Store, so you don't have to re-buy the games or anything. It'll carry over everything from your Google account, which is very nice. The screen on this tablet, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's got some decent off-axis viewing angles, it's got good color replication, and it looks pretty sharp. And it also goes pretty bright, so you can use it in any conditions, and it also goes very dim, so if you want a game at nighttime or read a book in the nighttime, then this is going to be a great tablet for you. But this is a gaming tablet, so let's take a look at some games. Trine 2 comes pre-installed here, and this game, I actually played this for about two hours yesterday, and the battery was still alive after that, which was great, because I'm sure this is a pretty GPU-intensive game, and I don't see any major frame drops at all when I was playing this, and it's playing very well, so I'll definitely have more game footage of this in a separate video. If you've watched my videos at all, then you know that I played Dead Trigger 2 a lot. I actually use this to benchmark a lot of the GPU performance on some of my past reviews. And I have to say that this is on the highest graphical setting and it's running buttery smooth. As you can see that the frames per second is very fast. And this is the smoothest device that I've seen playing Dead Trigger 2. And that includes every device I've ever tested before. So it's just running absolutely buttery smooth. And the front facing speakers actually sound pretty nice. Listen to them for just a second. Just on a side note and from personal use, that the Shield Portable, I usually have to put it down one graphical notch to get it to play very smooth. Now, this is on the highest graphical setting right now, but once a lot of zombies get on the screen, it does kind of skip frames there and it's just not as smooth. The Shield Portable has gotten a lot better since its last updates and gotten a lot faster, but definitely the K1 outperforms it, so I cannot wait for the Shield Portable 2. You do not have to buy the Shield wireless controller if you already have a Bluetooth controller, and you can play most games with it because it does map to any Bluetooth controller. So here I am using the Amazon Fire controller, and there's absolutely no problems with it whatsoever on Dead Trigger. So you can map all of these buttons and have a good time. Now I have to test if this actually works on some of the Shield exclusive games, such as Portal. I'll go ahead and check those out, but I think it works without a problem since I've seen that happen on some other videos. Before I go, let's take a quick look at the stylus that's there in the upper right corner. And my experience with it so far is very positive. I have seen no kind of lags or latency in the stylus at all, and it's very easy to use. And this app is actually kind of cool just messing with it. I'm not a huge stylus fan, but I like the way that it's shaped. I can see that being shaped like a brush, you can get different kind of strokes on there. And I can see an artist really taking advantage of that. All right, guys, so what do you think about the Shield tablet? I think this is a pretty good choice here. I mean, $299, that is a budget tablet in my eyes. And I think the specs here definitely supersede that $300 price point. 
let me know what you want to see covered on this tablet. I'm waiting for these accessories to come in so I can give you that full picture and that full experience in my full review. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific if you have any questions. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are new to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.